I have with me Feminista Jones, and Feminista Jones is a a sex-positive black feminist from New York City. She is an award-winning writer, blogger, and a mental health social worker. She is currently the love and sex section editor of blogher.com, blogher.com. Uh, where she writes about feminism, race, and popular culture. Uh, She hosts a weekly sex-positive podcast this week in Blackness After Dark. We're going to tell you how to get all this. Uh, I wanted to discuss the topics of sex ethics, feminism, and race with my guests, and she will also take your calls. Uh, 888-775-3773. Feminista, good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Happy New Year to you. I wish you well this year. Thank you so much. Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, Feminista is not your real name. It's a, uh, it's your, uh, what, entertainer name? A pseudonym. It's a pseudonym. What does it mean? Well, it's kind of a throwback to um, if you if you remember from the black exploitation films Cleopatra Jones, mm-hmm. and she was like this, you know, almost hyperbolic kind of image of this like tall, you know, strong black woman who was taking down crime and things like that. Um, and I kind of just took on that and and as feminista and um, and added the Jones to it, kind of like a feminist and Cleopatra. It's was, it was just a play on on that name. Yes, I understand that. <laughs> um, and I want to talk to you about, you wrote a very interesting blog about sex on Salon. You say Mm -hmm. that safe sex is not only about maintaining physical safety and avoiding disease, infections, and pregnancy. We should enter into sexual relationships also feeling mentally and emotionally safe and confident. Explain Mm -hmm. all that to us. Well, I think one of the most important things about um, having sexual agency and making the choice to to engage in sex is being informed about that decision. And when we talk about being informed, it's just kind of being well aware of who you are, where you are in your life, and all of the decisions that you're making. But knowing that sex can lead to so many more significant outcomes, you kind of want to make sure that you're entering it completely safe. Your mind is where you want it to be, your spirit is where you want to be, and you're not having sex because you feel obligated or feel forced or anything, but that you're actively making this choice and you're thinking this is going to be good for my overall health and well-being, mental, physical, spiritual, all of that. How is uh, having sex good for you mentally, physically, and your overall being? How is that good for you? Well, I, I think the, the intimacy aspect of, of being that close to someone and, and connecting yourself with that someone. So if you're, you know, in a heterosexual situation, you're you're literally like combining your bodies. And I think sometimes we don't even think about the significance of that. Like, especially for women, we're a lot of women that have sex with men. We are taking men into our physical beings. So there is an intimacy that is created there. And, you, of course, you've got the biological chemicals that are released that make you feel better, um, the enjoyment of it, the pleasure that comes from it. Just improves your mood. It, like, it really can. When you're going into, like, I, I don't know about you, but it, when I have morning sex, my life is just the morning whole day sex. is just great. I walk down the street skipping, and you know, it just kind of imp- it can improve your mood. Um, but it doesn't last, of, though. It doesn't last. Oh, it, it 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 can. It really can. And I think that. It, it depends on who you're having it with. If it's somebody that you are in a relationship with that you care about, it definitely lingers on until the next time you have it. <laughs> um, you can think back on it and have really great memories. I mean, there's so much that goes into that, and I just think that overall it just kind of lifts your mood and makes you feel good about being connected to someone. Because you become addicted to a person once you have sex with them, sh- should you wait until marriage before you have sex? I don't necessarily agree that everybody gets addicted. I think the word addicted is a bit strong, and as someone who works in mental health and substance abuse, I tend to not use that word casually. Um, I do think that some people form strong connections to people, and I think that in America, because not every person is allowed to legally be married to the person they want to have sex with, I don't know if we can put that limitation on that. Um, I think that 
being in a, a, a committed relationship where there's love and things like that, I think that's probably ideal for most people, but I don't think that it's absolutely required. So are you saying, no, you don't necessarily have to be mm-hmm. married to have sex or should be married? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, um, I, would, I would never say that you have to be married to have, you know, sex that can be beneficial to you. Really? Um <laughs> Uh, you said that uh, most people in this country cannot legally be married, but you can't. Every man no. and woman can get married before having sex. Well, I didn't say most. I said not everyone can legally get married. But they and can, I though. In- Why can't well, they? Well, no. Well, women can't marry women in every state. There's 18 states we can do that in. Men can't marry men in every state. But so that should not be. States. I'm talking about normal people. Normal men and women can get married before having sex. Those people well, should not be allowed to get married. Because well, that's I, I'm that's gonna abnormal. That. So I'm going to disagree with that. Oh, because you do? I don't, yeah, I don't consider. You know, I'm, I'm not going to put the label of normal, and I'm not going to say that people that are homosexual are not normal. So I can't really, I can't really like go down that particular train of thought. But I, I do believe in equality for all people, and I do believe that people have the right to engage you know, in in sexual relationships with adult consenting people that they're attracted to. You know, I'm not going to say that. Only the only people that are normal are people that can are men and women who are having sex with each other. I just can't say that. Uh, even though it's true, you still won't say it. Well, no, I don't agree that it's true. Um, what is um, you know? I have noticed that once people have sex, and when I used to be into sex, I saw it happen to me too. Is that if you're dating a woman and the moment you have sex with her, it changes the relationship. It changes it the can. way you feel. The cha- it changes the way you see things, and that's what causes the addiction. And I think that's why you should wait until you get married because under the umbrella of marriage, you can work it out. Whereas if you're not married, you, you're less likely to work it out. Well, I think that um, there's a lot of evidence that marriages don't work out regardless. I mean, we have a divorce rate that is, what, like over 50% right now? Right. So I think it's a little bit more than sex, and I don't think that marriage is going to help your so-called addiction to sex. I think what's important is that you have sex with people that you trust, that you feel safe with, and people that you respect. And I think that if, if those feelings are returned, if they respect you and trust you and they are committed to protecting you, I think you can avoid a lot of the negative things that go with it. So I think part of the main issue is that we don't have the conversations that we need to have with other people before we go into having sex. We're not thinking about the whole picture. Some people do rush into having sex too quickly, but I don't think that it's connected to whether or not you're married. How old should you be before you have sex? I think you should be... I think you should have sex when you are mentally, physically, and spiritually, and financially uh, ready to take care of the possible consequences of sex. And what age is that? Um, so what age that is could that? Be, I mean, that could be anything. I had sex first when I was 16, and I know that it was risky back then. I knew that I could not, you know, take care of myself were I to get pregnant or have things like that. So it was definitely risky. Um, but I really Why did you do people. it? Why did you do it at 16? Because I wanted to. I was 16, and I was horny. Really? <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, I think that's, we have to kind of be real with that. And I think that when we're talking with younger people and, you know, teenagers and stuff, we have to acknowledge that they are, you know, sexually aroused. They are curious. They are interested in things. And if we take the approach of don't have sex, that's exactly what they're going to do. I highly Rather, recommend should... teenagers not having sex. I do. I, I, I actually do. Hold um, that thought that for we... me. Hold, it, hold that thought. Let me take a break. You say in this article... You don't have to love someone to have sex, but you should, at the very least, respect your partners and yourself enough to make what goes on between you pleasurable and safe. How many partners should a person have sexually? A person can have as many sexual partners as they want. (laughs) Really? Um, But but once they do that, though, they become whores. Well, according to you. No, but, um, according to the <laughs> truth. And no well, man wants to marry a whore. Well, why are you speaking only about men? What about what women want? And, and men are whoremakers too, and no woman want a whoremaker because they can well, never I, be trusted. Well, I think that we have very different ideas on what a quote-unquote whore is. I think What's that your definition person, of a whore? I don't like to use the word. I think it's a word made up to make women look bad for enjoying sex. No, it's it made it up to bring shame to women and men having sex with everybody and their mama. 
Well, I, and that's the thing. I don't, I don't think that we need to shame people for their sexual activity. I think that people need to be comfortable in having sex and enjoying it without feeling shame. Sh- sex is an essential like, part of life. It really is. So why do we shame people for enjoying it? Is sex love? No. Sex is not love. So you're no. saying just do it with however many people you want to just for the pleasure of it. I'm saying that if you feel inclined to have sex with more than one person and it feels good and safe and right to you and you're an adult and you're making these decisions, yeah, you, you definitely can do that. Uh, you know, I may have asked you this and forgive me if mm-hmm. I'm repeating it. What is the purpose of sex? I think that the, there's a number of purposes of sex. I think one of them is Uh, for some people to try and have children. I think for other people it is purely for physical enjoyment. I think for some it's creating uh, intimacy and emotional closeness. Um, For others it's it's a part of their marriage and something that they enjoy while they're being while they're married and I think that sex has a lot of different purposes for different people. It's really up to the individual. I want to go back to the word shame. The the good thing about shame it helps to contain us and prevent us in many cases from going out of control. But when you remove the word shame, then there's nothing to stop people from destroying themselves. Some people, because most people don't believe in God, or many don't, so they have no shame. We need the shame to be there. I personally remember when there was a sense of shame in the black community, you know, during the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, and then the civil rights movement came along, the 60s came along, the fathers left their homes, and they removed the word shame, and now there is no respect between, for the most part, except to the rule, of course, but there is no respect between men and women in the black community. You have 73% of black babies born out of wedlock. The, black men, the average black man could give a hoot about the black woman. They take advantage of her because... There is no shame anymore. So when you remove shame, your life goes out of control. Would you re- agree with that? No. You would not. <laughs> I don't agree with anything that you just said. Um, I think that shame actually works in the opposite direction. We've seen it with the prohibition movements. We've seen it with all of the efforts that we've made to make things look bad. It makes them more appealing, and it makes people more likely to go and do them. And when, they, when we try to shame people out of behavior, what we end up having is people not only engaging in that exact behavior, but doing it in silence more recklessly and without the safety and protection that they could use if we did not make it a shame. I totally thing. disagree with that. I disagree. Shame helped to control. Do you disagree with me that 73% of black children, black babies are born out of wedlock? No, I don't agree with that, but I think but that that's we have true to though. At, Why don't you agree with well, it? It's a fact. I didn't say that I disagreed. I said that I, do, I don't, I don't debate or um, I don't protest statistics and facts. What I, what I do is I examine why those statistics and those facts exist, because what those statistics don't show is that a lot of those families live together. They are just not legally married. And part of why they don't get legally married is if you look at statistics related to social policy, it does not make a lot of financial sense for poor people to get married. So you have a lot of black families. Because if they're married, that, they can't rely on the government. That doesn't make sense to me either. You don't want to rely on the government. Well, no, you don't want to rely but on But that's what they do need, when they're not married. But if you need assistance, if you need assistance to help yourself get out of poverty that you were born into and had no choice to be born into, then I think you, could, you should be able to get some assistance in doing that. But going back to the idea about these black families, it's not always about the marriage. It's about families being together and working together to raise children. And I don't like the idea that you're saying that black men don't care about black women or their children. That is absolutely patently false. No, and it's I absolutely think, true. The, the government no, is taking care of them. But you're, you're, you're making a sweeping statement about all black men, and I will not allow you to do that, because if so, you'd have to include I didn't say all. I said not all, yeah. not all, but most. No, you said you said. Well, let me clear men. it up. Not all, not all, black. not all. I said exceptions to the rule. Mm-hmm. But not all, not all, but most. The average black man can care. There are some good black men who men who do care about black women, but the average black man do not like black women because of their attitudes. They have no sense of shame anymore. They are controlling. So they are they are just having sex with them in many cases. Eighty-eight percent of married black women and black men have black wives. Do you realize that? Of all black men that are married, 
88 percent of them are married to black women. And your so point is your right. Idea, your idea that the average black man doesn't like black women is absolutely wrong. Then why are they making all these babies with them out of wedlock? They're not making all these babies. I 73 percent of them. I want to. You know I want to move you know on what? to why something you, about why sex. Why don't you quote the statistics about white people and they're having children out of wedlock? Well, that Bring is those that's a, as well because I think it's an American culture thing that we're moving towards, where fewer and fewer people are getting married yeah. and people are getting more divorced. We're having over fifty percent of people who actually do get married end up getting divorced. Well, that's why you so, make a very interesting point. That's why I've said to white Americans they need to learn from black people what not to do because prior to the civil rights movement and the feminists taking over and all this crap, black people had a sense of shame. They were married for the most part. They respected what was right. They did not have all these babies out they of wedlock. Had children but then once, of their it, marriage, once the government, let me just make this point. Let me make this point. Like, once the government came in the, and the so-called civil rights leaders took over, the shame went out the window. And that is happening in the white community, too. They're turning away from shame. And as a result, they're becoming just like black Americans. Well, I know. I think that, you know, emulating black Americans is actually a beautiful thing because I'm actually happy and love to be black. But, but I don't black think Americans, most of them are immoral. Think, Why would you want to emulate that and live in the ghettos? Because... Because you're ta- if you're going to sit there and say that most black Americans are immoral, then we can end this conversation because I will never sell out my people and I will never denigrate them on a radio show. I love being black. I am proud to be black. I think that black Americans are the most enduring people, <laughs> considering everything that our, our ancestors have endured. And I think that we work really no hard within our that, communities. No. I think we work really hard within our communities to try and keep our family structures together. I think that the narrative but they're is not together, though. is but they are. And then why the do you have so much violence? I don't want to. Get, I want to talk about your yeah. sex and your feminist yeah. stuff. But if black people were so strong and so enduring and so good, you wouldn't have black violence as you see now. You wouldn't have gangs in the black community. You wouldn't why have, do you have ghettos. Violence? Why do you have? You white wouldn't violence? have ghettos. You wouldn't have the anger that why you, you have. have white rural so black people, most black people are deceiving themselves. It's not true what you're saying. But I want to ask about sex. Yeah. Okay. Men and women see sex. Differently, would you agree to that? I think for the most part, yes. And so men can just have sex with a woman and not feel anything for her or about her and go right next door and have sex with another woman and so on and so on. Whereas women tend to become emotionally attached once they have sex with men. Why would you want to put women in that predicament by encouraging the them to have all, sex with every Tom, Di- with every Tom, Dick, and Harry? Harry, I'll like, I'll let you respond to that, and then we'll take some calls right after this break. Okay, folks, welcome back. Manhood Hour is coming up in the uh, third hour today. The next hour, you do not, do not want to miss. I don't know that one coming up, folks. It is absolutely. Amazing. Should men be nice? Does niceness destroy courage in males? I've heard men who say that they're nice and they're very weak. You could always tell a nice, a weak man, and because he's nice. We'll get into that uh, in the uh, next hour. But for now, my guest, uh, Feminista Jones, is with me. A uh, sex-positive black feminist from uh, New York City. She's an award-winning writer, blogger, and a mental health social worker. We're going to tell you how to get to all of her information in a minute. She has agreed to stay a little longer. She was scheduled for 20 to 30 minutes. And I like the fact that she's not running. So, right on. Uh, Feminist, what is your website for the folks? Um, you can go to uh, feministajones.com slash blog. Uh, that's where you can find all of my information, um, as well as links to things that I do in other sites and things like that. Are you a feminist? I am. And Very what so. define feminist for me? A feminist is someone who believes in equality, in social equality, political equality, and economic equality between the sexes. Have you always been a feminist or did you become one? I think I've always believed in that. Um, I just didn't have a name for it when I was like younger and didn't really hadn't really read a lot. But um, when I came to realize what feminism was, um, I realized I was speaking about how I felt. I noticed that um, since this country has allowed feminists to come into existence and into power, 
they have done nothing good for the country and mm-hmm. that they hate men. They hate the family. They hate the unborn child. They accept mm-hmm. everything that's evil and they hate anything that's good. And now that they are in, uh, many of them are in a, a powerful position or authority position, they are spreading their evil throughout the earth. Should we have allowed feminists to come to the forefront as we have allowed? Well, I think that entire description is completely false. Um, I am a feminist who, you know, got married, had a son. Um, I love my child. I love my husband. Um, I love what I do at work. Um, I love my family. Um, I I support uh, things like you know, women being able to vote, uh, women being able to drive their own cars, uh, women being able to have credit cards, all those things that, you know, feminism uh, Okay, let me give you examples for. of what I mean. So, maybe you don't know what I mean. Feminists, yeah, maybe I don't. Feminists <laughs> support homosexuality. They support same-sex marriage. Do you support same-sex marriage? Some feminists do, and I absolutely do. Okay, that's not good for society. It's not good for the family. It's not good for the country. How about abortion? Feminists, National Organization of Women Who Hate Men and others like them, they support abortion. Do you support abortion? I wouldn't call feminists people who hate men, and I do support a woman's right to choose what she's going to do with her body. So that's yes, that you support abortion? Mm -hmm. You support abortion? If that's the choice that women want, I support abortion being legal. I don't support abortion just because I love abortion. I support it being legal and being an option for women. You don't believe that an unborn child deserves a chance to live? I believe that women have the right to make their own reproductive decisions. Who Did God give them that right? Who gave them that right to kill a child in the womb? I don't think that we need to even consider that the religious aspect of that. These women are making these decisions for their bodies. But who gave not, them that right? Woman. You said they have they, a right to do this, to yes, kill an unborn child. Who have, gave them that right? Autonomy. Who gave them By, that right? They have their own right. They take that right. Where did they get beings, it from, though? It, right come from, it, came from some, it came from somewhere. Where did it come from? I don't know. Okay. That's a good answer, honest answer. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, yes. And do you think God will support the evil that you support? I don't support evil. Abortion is evil. Same-sex marriage is evil. I disagree or with Or sin. How about sin? Would you accept? Do you believe God supports sin? I don't think either of those are sin. Oh, okay. Um, race. How do you see the race relations today between blacks and whites? Is it better or worse uh, within the last five years or so? I think five years is a very small uh, time to compare race relations and development. Um, I think that it really depends on who you're talking to. I, 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 it's really hard to say. What do you think? What is it worse or better between, between the races? Um, I think the things are pretty much the same. You do? I do. Wow. So you don't think prior to Obama becoming the president, race relations were better in this country? No. You don't? Uh, no. And... How do you see race relations? I see them as a work in progress. Um, do you agree with me that, and you may not, but it's a good question, mm-hmm. I think. I've noticed that uh, white Americans, not all but most, have done their best to make amend for the past. They have given black Americans everything they want. Black Americans wanted to integrate the schools. Or, you know, They wanted to live in the same neighborhoods. They wanted to work with white people. White people have apologized for what happened in the past. Now we have black racism, and I personally see that most blacks are racist toward whites. And do you agree with me, until until we resolve black racism, the race issue will never get better in this country. We will never become as one. Jesse, you just said... I see most black people are racist towards whites. There are 40 million black people in America. How do you see what most black people are doing? Well, the recent example is uh, uh, 96% of black Americans voted for the fallen Messiah, Barack Obama, and most of them would say that they are Christians. And so you had the preachers, black preachers and all, and they voted for him first because he was black. That's racism within itself. No, I don't agree. You don't agree. And then the second example is that 
you have what these blacks are calling knockout games where they're going and knocking white people out and in many cases killing them simply no, because not. they hate white they're not. They, people. Simply it, was because they, it was just revealed that that was actually made up. It wasn't and made it was up. Propaganda no. That it's not happening. Who, who revealed that? So, so there was an article, I think, I think in the New York Times, if I'm not mistaken, was showing that the knockout game has been a media propaganda you, piece. Yeah. So we don't even need to discuss that because I don't even want to give credit to that. You were... And so the videos that show that, the videos that show those incidents were not real? I don't particularly care because that's not what we're talking about right now. So if you want to talk about what I came on to talk about, which and is why don't you ethics, ca- right, but why don't you care you about that? About that, Because I don't care about a couple of YouTube videos about children or young people being violent when I could show you like hundreds of thousands of videos of young well, white you, children you agree. being violent as well. So you're not, I'm I'm not going to play party to you maligning black people. I'm if not that's maligning. What you want to do, that's fine. If that's what you'd like to do, that is fine. According to my producer, you agreed to, to talk about, but you agreed to talk about race. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Feminism, we found that article you mentioned about the black knockout game wasn't real. It was not the New York Times. It was written mm-hmm. on the Huffington Post by some okay. liberal, godless black man. So you can't get that any credit at all uh, or shouldn't. Do you have sex with a whole di- a bunch of different guys? Um, I don't think you as a uh, older, respect- respected black man has the right to ask me about my sex life. I think that's borderline perverted and I need you to not ask me about but, sex but if you're promoting it people are going to just assume that you are anything and I don't I want people to have the wrong line. perception of you you have crossed a line asking me about my personal sex you life. said you had and a child out of leave it there did you have a child out of wedlock no I was married when my son was born I have a text from you from AC of ways of gray.com would she agree that most people who aren't married do not have sexual relations without emotional instability and some lasting issues? Most are not having sex the way she says that they that we should. Shouldn't she make sure that sex is maturity in America get sex maturity in America get under control before she promotes sex? in the way that she does it. I'm not promoting sex. What do you, but by telling people, just do what you want, have your pleasure, have as many partners as you want, it's just okay. Uh, it's that, not promoting. What, what are it's you promoting? People to, it's, I'm telling people to make decisions that are best for their own lives. But, but you are in a position of uh, encouragement or authority, so a lot of people are going to believe you and they're going to fall for it. And so many people are suffering because of sex, they're just out there going crazy with it, and they're suffering. So because you're in a position to encourage people to do it, you are having that influence. Well, then, I mean, I don't think that I am encouraging people to do anything other than assess what is right and good for themselves and act on that safely. That's what I'm telling people to do. And if that ends up being that people decide that they want to have sex and they want to enjoy it and they want to take precautions and make sure that they're safe, then that's fine. I'm not here promoting sex. That is not my job. I don't promote sex. I don't sell (laughs) the idea of sex. I talk about having safe sex sex. I talk about having sex in ways that will reduce the harm that sex can have to people. I want to go quickly back to the phone. We're running out of time. But you do agree that having sex with many different people uh, 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 raise the risk of disease, though, right? You do agree to that. I agree that having unprotected sex with a lot of people raises the risk of disease. Yes. Let's go to uh, Chelsea, Michigan and talk to Tony. Tony, welcome to the show, sir. Hey, Dominique, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, man. I can't wait till you get out here to Detroit, you know, come out <laughs> this way. And, and uh, it, it, it's a whole lot of people. They would love you out here, too. And, I mean, I'm a conservative, but still, I, you know, I like your fire. But I know I just, I just the reason why I called in is because I know you just told uh, Jesse that he stepped over the line. And I can understand that and I understand. No, I did not from. step over line. I mean, if she's promoted something, it has to be something that she believes well, in. And she believes right. that it's okay to have sex with as many people as you want. So well, naturally, you're going to think she's doing it too. And I want to clear that up. Right. I, I understand that. But I'm saying, I, I, she said you stepped over. I didn't feel as though it was stepping over the line. Only because 
I've seen a YouTube video where mm-hmm. he is showing it's all about, I, w- I would just say the word sodomy and how for women to be more comfortable with it. Who's well, showing that? So actually, I make it very clear in the video that I don't do it, and I'm trying to tell people but, how to do it safely if they do do it. Right, I, I understand that. So I'm, the, what I'm saying is, but when you have videos like that, I think, especially when you come on a program like this, you know, you should be open and be more comfortable and be open to whatever the, uh, whatever. No, uh, I am. Uh, I am. And I, and I right. do, but I also think that because of what I do, I do have the right to kind of establish some boundaries. And one of the things right. that people that have been following me for a no, long time know is that I don't really sp- speak specifically but, about what I do. So because you, I, are right, you right, right, right. line that I draw. Are you promoting something that you don't even believe in or do yourself? Actually, I wasn't promote. If you watch the video, I'm not promoting it. I, like I said a few minutes ago, my what I do is try to get people to think about and be safe with what they do do. So all of my writing, all of my videos, everything is like, if you are going to do this, here are some ways that you can go about doing it. Back in a moment. Okay, folks, Manhood Hours coming up in the next hour. You do not want to miss this, uh, uh, the next hour as well. If you're not getting all three hours by way of radio, go to bondinfo.org. Continue to listen live. Uh, uh, Feminista Jones is with me. I appreciate your time. Will you come back on again? <laughs> I don't know, Jesse. Why not? I'm a good guy, right? <laughs> no, I think I think the 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 issue. I mean, I don't have a problem talking if we stay on the topic. I think I think uh, you have this uh, tendency towards trying to put words in people's mouths that no, they didn't I'm not, say. And I I'm don't just think asking cool. the question. One thing you said <laughs> that uh, was a little surprising to me is that. Um, and Tony from Michigan made the point is that <laughs> you're promoting sodomy. And you're telling these folks how to have sex with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. But when I ask, are you having sex with more than one man? You felt ashamed about that, and said no, that I, didn't I feel was. Ashamed at but all, it seemed actually. hypocritical. I just didn't feel like it seemed, signifying the, the his, question with an answer. I know, but it seemed hypocritical that you don't want to uh, say that you're doing these things, but yet you promote these things. Well, I don't promote them. So that's the thing. You keep using the word promote. I disagree with the word promote. So as long as we disagree on that, there's really no follow-up to that. But what did you, say, what did you, mean, what did you mean when you said that uh, I'm a, a young, a older, respectable man and I shouldn't ask you if you're having sex with more than one man? Because I don't think that it's your place to ask a woman what she is doing but with this her woman sex is, life, unless but, she is your woman. But this woman is promoting it. This woman is promoting it, so I have a right so to again, ask. again, you're talking about promoting. We disagree with that. Unless it is the woman that you are involved with, you really don't need to ask questions I about disagree what she's doing with that. With her I, if they're promoting something, I do have a right to ask if you're doing it too. But let me, what, what's your website? My website is feministajones.com. When you... And Oh, go ahead. People can go, people can go there, and you find links to all my videos and articles and everything that you need to know about me. Will you come back? We want. I want to have you back. I'll think about it. Don't, How about that? You're not mad. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a good guest. You didn't put your tail between your legs and, and yeah. run. So I like that. Most but most thank you. feminists. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, most feminists are cowards. They can't take the heat. Well, I don't agree with that either, but I mean, I'm definitely down for conversation. What does sex positive mean real fast? It means that you don't see sex as a bad thing. Oh. You think of sex as a good thing. Even though it can be a bad thing. It can be, okay. but you, you try to think of it more in the positive way. Bob, go to guy, last caller for now. What's your short question real fast? Yeah, I can prove that she's lying with the safe with um, not promoting uh, uh, all kind of uh, fornication. How, how do you do that? The word, the word safe sex means sex outside of marriage that can be done with a with a silly little plastic thing um you know before that how do you respond to that feminista i already defined safe sex as being beyond just using a condom so i don't know what he's talking about right Right, so safe sex condoms were just recently invented people have been using sheep intestine skin for condoms since as long as we know we're going to have you back you're an excellent thank guest you. thank, thanks for coming Take on care. okay